Make me rainbows, make me spring in the snow, make me... Hi, I'm Tony Shepard, and today I'm going to walk you through my box called Mix Factory. It's designed by Paul Wolf. It's my concept, and it's manufactured by A Designs Audio, which, as we all know, is Peter Montessi. It's been something I've been working with for a while. Uh, I've been kind of toying with this concept of having a summing unit. I've thought about it for a long time, and I, my first call was to Paul Wolf because I thought, because I've been using some stuff that Paul has been working with for years, that this may be an easy fix for Paul. And I talked to Paul over the phone after I kind of ran everything by Peter, and I told him what I wanted to do, and Peter was like, well, let's, let's kind of flush it out and see what happens. And um, I talked to Paul, we all sat down and kind of went through everything. And Paul was like, I could do this for you. We, we could we can make this sound great. And I wanted something that would allow 16 channels or more of summing in a two unit rack. Um, and it just kind of evolved from there. From there, it's like, okay, well, what if we could have two units put together and link them? So now we've got 32 channels of summing. And when Paul designed this unit, he designed it in such a way so that all of the things that I kept throwing at him, he kept saying, I can do that. I can do that. So we, uh, we, we started with one kind of concept and it just kept broadening, ever making sure that the sonics were really the key because it was more important to us to make sure that even though we wanted to have features in the box, it was definitely more important for us to have the console sound in a 2RU and to make sure that we had that wrapped up tight. And when we gave this box to all of the, we had five or six different beta testers, they all would send us mixes, but they wouldn't label what was the mix factory and what wasn't. And they had their particular manufactured box that they already had, and they put it up against what we had, and instantly we could pick out what was mix factory, because there's an openness to it, there's a breath to it, there's a depth to the mixes. They just completely opened up. And whether it was an in-the-box mix or another manufacturer's mix, we could instantly see what was ours and what wasn't. Because when you listen to them, it was as if their mixes did this and our mixes did this. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. You really just kind of have to hear it. It's really kind of breathtaking, though, because most of the people who were doing the beta testing were blown away by what they did. We had one guy who sent them uh, mixes to a record label and he said, A, B, which one you like better? And I think he sent them five or six mixes and every time he sent an in-the-box mix versus our Mix Factory mix, they picked their Mix Factory every time. They kept saying, dude, there's something about it. It's like a three-dimensional sound. What, what did you do to it? It just breathes. It just uh, comes alive. And uh, we're pretty proud of the fact that it's instantly recognizable what is what you put through this box because it sounds amazing. So this is Mix Factory. The top row is pan right here. This row is fader or volume. We've got two groups here. So this is one through eight. You can see them kind of color coded. This is one through eight and this is nine through 16. Each group has its own submaster. This is one through eight submaster. And this is 9 through 16 submaster. And then this is the overall master here. So you've got 1 through 8, 9 through 16, overall master. And then each group of 8 has an insert. The way the inserts work are the insert buttons are for 1 through 8. It comes out as 1 through 8, a stereo grouping. Okay? So it's not individual 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's just 1 through 8 as a group. That's a stereo insert on the XLR in and XLR out, okay? So if you wanted to take everything off one through one through eight and send it out somewhere and bring it back, that's what this will do, insert in and out. It's the same thing on nine through 16. It's a bank of eight. They're not individually one through eight and nine through 16. There's not 16 different inserts. There's a stereo insert for one through eight and a stereo insert for nine through 16. And those buttons are engaged here. The same thing for the two bus. 
It's a stereo insert on the two bus, and that button is here. Your inserts on the back are all XLRs. Now, I don't have mine set up right now because the output that I have of my mix factory goes directly out to another box. I don't have it set up on the insert chain. That's just the way I do it. But we tried to adapt it and make sure that it would be uh, more useful for other people other than because it's not just the way I work personally. So you could have an insert on one through eight. You could do parallel compression and send it out and bring it back. You could have two of these put together. There's any number of ways you can make this work for you. It's just a really flexible box. And by the way, in case you're wondering, this unit here is our alpha unit. And that's why it looks different than our production unit. In case someone looks at it and thought, oh my gosh, why is this not looking the same? That's the reason why. This is our alpha unit. And I've been beta testing this. We beta tested this probably six months before we ever got really going on the production units. But the production units do look like this. They're all color coded, which makes it a little easier for you to work with on every level. Let me go to a, a couple of things that are pretty interesting about the Mix Factory. So your top level is pan. And the way I've got this set up, because I work in a hybrid fashion, I've got plugins on my two bus inside Pro Tools. For me, it's the SSL from Waves, but it may be whatever you want it to be. So I just don't dime or take all the way to the far right um, the fader on the box. I set mine up at a minus 18 in and I allow it to have a little headroom so that I've got a little bit more play inside my workstation inside Pro Tools because there's always some kind of headroom I'm looking for or something I'm, I need where it's just, I just need an extra five or 10 dB of headroom. Now that we've covered what these rows are, this is once again pan for each one of the 16 channels and this is volume or fader for each one of the 16 channels. Don't forget, we've got an insert on one through eight, an insert on nine through 16, and then an insert on the two bus. This little button down here on the bottom is a transformer that we can kick in and out of the two bus. When the blue button is on, there's no transformer in the two bus. When the blue button is off, the transformers are in. So let me talk a little bit about the transformers. The transformers in this box are custom Cinemag transformers. They're custom wound and they are exquisite. We went through a lot of transformers to get the right sound for this box. The box sounds amazing, even if there are no transformers engaged, but we've gone to great lengths to make sure that when you do use the transformers, they have a good sound. They are unique. Um, we wanted to have a console sound, even if there was no transformers in the box. The, the transformers just add that extra oomph that you're looking for when you're looking for something just to bring the mids forward. When you listen to it, you'll know what we're talking about. But even without the transformers engaged, the box still sounds amazing. A couple of people who have reviewed this so far from Sound on Sound and from Mix Magazine, once they hear it with the transformer in, they've all pretty much said that they absolutely love it all the way without ever taking the transformer off. And I, I, I agree, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of mixing and you didn't do the tracking and didn't get a lot of transformers as it was going through, it didn't go through a lot of iron, you didn't hit a lot of transformers on the way in. It really, really comes to bear when you're talking about doing it on the two bus because it just wraps that two bus in transformer love and it sounds amazing. That's the basic kind of once over of this box. You've got pans on the top, fader on the bottom, and under each one of the 16 channels, you've got a mute button that also doubles as a signal indicator light. I'm gonna play a little bit of music here, and you're gonna be able to see, actually physically see the lights light up on the mute buttons here. But as you can see, they're lighting up. And you can look from across the room and see, literally see the lights light up and do exactly what they're, you're hearing on the mix. So you can look over and say, um, why am I not seeing this? Why am I not hearing this? Because they're identical. You can see where the kick is on seven and eight or the vocal on, one, on three and four. And it, everything corresponds. So it's not just a mute button. If I wanted to, I could just go through and mute everything this way. 
or slide back down. You can move individual channels as you go along. It's a pretty cool feature that we put into it. So it just allows you to have some visual reference as to what the audible reference is going on inside your mix. One of the great features of Mix Factory is the fact that these boxes are linkable. We've had four hooked together. And the great thing about them is you don't lose any channels. There is a summing feature that allows one mix factory to dump into another mix factory. And the second mix factory is controlled by the overall master volume. So each one subsequently dumps into the other one. So you don't get just 16 and then the next one is 16 minus two channels because you're linking them. You get a full 16 on every box. So 16, 32, if you hook four of them together, you got 64. It's a really ingenious way that Paul came up with linking these boxes to make sure that you're getting the sonics of each one and you can bypass the transformer on each individual box so you can have it transformer in or not transformer and you could put like all of your drums and have those summed down to the last box where everything is just chained with all the transformers in. It's, there's any, so many ways to work the sonics of this box, it'll make your head spin. I come out of Pro Tools and for the way I like to work, I like to go through various analog boxes. And for me, uh, for instance, on the vocals, I go through an A Designs hammer first, which you'll see here. I go through an A Designs hammer box uh, for all my vocals, I actually have two of them. So I will put them into three and four. I'll take outputs three and four, let's say, and go into one hammer and then go into the mix factory and then go out of seven and eight into a second hammer, which is behind me, and then go into mix factory. And the rest of the boxes go directly into there from Pro Tools. So I just patch out of the patch bay into... Um, the mix factory. So all the other channels come up straight through except for those two channels. Or I should say those four channels because it's three and four, seven and eight. And why I do it that way is it's just this the whole thing has evolved where I used to mix completely in the box and I just would miss the analog goodness that I used to have. And um, I was fortunate enough to have Peter Montesi bring over a Designs hammer, and I wanted to incorporate it somehow into my setup. And that's how I kind of mix. It's a hybrid mix between the two worlds. It's plugins inside Pro Tools. That's my DAW of choice. And yet when it sums out, it sums out into all of the analog goodness. And the heart of that is the mix factory. So... We've got one and two going directly out of Pro Tools into Mix Factory, three and four going into um, the A Designs Hammer, and then uh, five and six, seven and eight going into its second hammer. And same thing all the way across. The second set of nine through 16, or the second set of eight, is directly going out just D sub. And on the back, you'll see that there are all D subs in. Uh, for the inputs. So it plug and play is the essence of this. You can just plug and play immediately. One of the things that we talked about before were how the mute buttons also doubled as signal indicators. So I'm going to have Diego play some of this music so that we can actually see what we're talking about here. Watch this carefully and we're going to show you what the visual representation is of all these items. Make me spring in the snow. Make me so there's are my low frequencies. Music, Side stick and finger snaps. Make me unwind. All the vocals are coming through three and four. And I output these in groups, Make stereo groups. You'll see them light up as the mix progresses. So let's take a listen. Make me sunset. Let me fall till I'm all I can be. Make me some rainbows. Stars so I want you to just mute the lead vocal. 
That's pretty much the mix factory in total. It's 16 channels of summing, linkable. It gives you visual references to what you're going on. You've got mutes on all 16 channels. Groups one through eight have their own insert. Group nine through 16 have their own insert. And you've got an insert on the two bus as well. Group one through eight has its own submaster, nine through 16 with its own submaster, and then the overall volume. Take a listen to it. I think you'll love it. It's really been one of those treats. It just has changed the way I've mixed over the last couple of years. And I think it'll do a lot for you to love as well. 